Would you please be upstanding if you are able to as we sing our first hymn for this evening, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please be seated. Welcome to Ballarat Central Uniting Church Ash Wednesday worship service as we mark the beginning of our journey in this season of Lent. Also welcome to those who are here at church and those who are joining us online. And I encourage you to stay with us in this special service to mark our journey in this season. Friends, on Ash Wednesday we begin the journey of Lent the 40 day season before Easter. During this time, we follow the example of Jesus, who was led by the Spirit to a 40 day period in the wilderness, just before he began his public ministry. There, Jesus fasted and prayed in order to learn what God was calling him to do and to build a spiritual strength and integrity to accomplish it. In the same way, we now begin a period of reflection and prayer so that we can learn what it means for us to be Christ's followers, to discover what God is calling us to do and be graced by God to grow in strength and in integrity. On Ash Wednesday, we have the opportunity to be marked by ashes. Ashes are a symbol of our humble humanity and of our tie to the earth, which is finite and fractured. Yet ashes are also a symbol of cleansing and rebirth, a sign that in Christ we are made new. As we receive ashes, We are invited to turn towards God, which is the meaning of the word repentance, our turning towards God, in order to receive a clean heart and a new spirit. And thank you for taking your time to participate in this Ash Wednesday 
worship service. Friends, this evening we gather and worship on the traditional lands of the Walderon people of the Kulin Nation. They have cared for these lands and waters for over 60,000 years. And we continue to pay our sincere respect to their elders, past, present, and imagined. The Uniting Church commits its members to work together with compassion and justice as first and second peoples of this vast land we call home. Hear this invitation. When we burn away all that we are and all that we have, when we burn away all that we think and feel, when we burn away all attachment and ego, we are reduced to this edge. Carbon dust ash. It has no form and very little substance. It is virtually nothing. And yet, out of the ashes can come new life. Friends, will we let it all fall away? Will we let it burn? Will we reduce ourselves to nothing so that God can do something new with us? And we'll continue with an opening prayer in which we are using the special psalm, Psalm 51, claimed to be written by King David after his affair with Bathsheba. And you may be familiar with that story. After the adulterous relationship, David tried to hide that relationship and cover that relationship by inviting Bathsheba's husband back home, Uriah. But her husband didn't want to go and sleep inside the house while the other men of Israel was out at war. And David did another play and even rode to the army commander and asked him, put Uriah on the front line. King David was challenged by Prophet Nathan. A psalm of David, when the prophet Nathan came to him after he had gone in to Bathsheba. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner, when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being, 
Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. Friends, the summons.
The New Testament reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 20 to chapter 6, verse 10. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault can be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance in infl afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labours, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech and the power of God with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honour and dishonour, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful but always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. And the Gospel reading from Matthew chapter 6. Beware of practising your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your arms may be done in secret, and your father, who sees in secret, will reward you. Concerning prayer. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Concerning fasting. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And concerning treasures, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. Our journey in the season 
season of Lent. Moses went up the mountain to receive God's command for the days. The Hebrew people lived in Egypt and God heard their cry and how they were treated by the people of Egypt. And he called Moses to lead his people out of bondage. 40 years from Egypt to the promised land. Just like a travel from Melbourne to Aubrey. But it took them 40 years. Why? And Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit up on the mountain in the wilderness. 40 days and 49. And here we are friends and followers of Christ coming today for our Ash Wednesday worship service and mark the beginning of our journey in the season of Lent 40 days and 40 nights inviting us to follow Christ. The one we heard last Sunday when he was appeared differently on the Mount of Transfiguration. My son, thou chosen, listen to him. And he is the one that really invites us, sisters and brothers in Christ, come and follow me in this next 40 days and then you will be able to see these miracles. A call to be like ashes, a call to humble ourselves, a call to repentance, to turn back to God, a call to make sure, not to make sure, to be aware that we are human beings. That we are not all really to the things that God has called us to do. But it is in God's grace that we continue to live and God helps us. From Psalm 51, we heard this great saying, the sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, heart. And I think we are not saying something here about the mind, but I think the mind and the heart really should come together with the spirit as well. And a broken and contrite heart, oh God, you will not despise. Friends, can I invite us to focus on our heart? to focus on our spirit as we journey in these 40 days and 40 nights and see how our hearts and our spirits relate to God and listen to Jesus and empowered and inspired And also in our journey in these next 40 days and 40 nights, we are reminded by Paul in his second letter to the Corinthians with these words that I want to remind us. It was read to us. So we are ambassadors to Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Ambassadors for Christ, and because Christ became one like us, called a sinner, 
yet commit no sin, so that in this Jesus we become righteous in the eyes of God. In these 40 days and 40 nights, in this journey in the season of Lent, hope we will be able to remember that we are ambassadors of Christ. And Christ continues to change with us. And also what we heard from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 6. And I think this reading reminds us, and I read it to us again, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. In this journey, we watch our spirit and our heart. In these 40 days and 40 nights, we watch that we continue to be ambassadors for Christ. He became one like us, so that in Christ, we became sons and daughters of God. And in this journey, friends, hope we will continue to watch our investment. It's really good to have good investments in our journey. That's really great. But Matthew is in me, is inviting us. There is another investment that followers of Christ are needed to make sure that we invest of that on that. And some people do those investments by helping those who are disadvantaged. And we have seen those investments in people who just turn up for those who are struck by flood and they really, really isolated in, the, in their roofs as well and a stranger just stand up on his boat or her boat and rescue them. That is a great investment. And in our journey, as we affirm our hope as well in a creed in a statement of the hope that we are a beautiful people. We are a beautiful people. We believe in one God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We proclaim Jesus Christ, the crucified and risen one, confessing him as Lord, to the glory of God the Father, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. We acclaim Jesus as the Lord of the Church, the head over all things, the beginning of a new creation. We acknowledge that we live and work between the time of Christ's death and resurrection and the final consummation of all things, which he will bring. We are a pilgrim people, always on the way towards a promised goal. On the way, Christ feeds us with the word and sacrament, and we have the gift of the Spirit, in order that we may not lose the way. We will live and work within the faith and unity of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, bearing witness to that unity, which is both Christ's gift and his will. We affirm that every member of the church is engaged to confess the faith of Christ crucified. Together with all the people of God, we will serve the world for which Christ died, and we await before the day of the Lord Jesus. Please be seated. Friends, 
I invite you to this cloth in front of us. We will spread out the pathway into land ahead of us. Purple color, color of money, also a color of loyalty, royalty. And you can see a candle, the ash inside a coconut shell. Coconut. And the word of God and the cross. We cannot yet see what lies at the end of it, but let us place ourselves upon it in faith. If God does not dare to walk ahead, then there is no true light in the distance. We have seen the fragile light of the Christ, the human one. This Christ is not saved from the unknown which lie on our path together. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, that we may remember that it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Sisters and brothers, friends, at this time we invite you to receive the sign of the cross on your forehead or on your hand. There is no right way, there is no wrong way, there is no obligation. I would invite you all to stand and if you desire, um, you will receive the cross from where you are. Please stand. Now I'm going to have my hands full. I wonder if I might ask my brother to hold the, uh, uh, our shell with ashes. Thank you, thank you. Now, of course, I'm going to go and wash my hands again. So again, you may choose to receive it on your hand or on your forehead. Barry, sorry, you may choose to receive that on your hand or on your forehead. Uh, or you may choose not to receive it. The choice is yours, my friends.
Friends, 
as we remain standing as we are able, let us pray. Lord Jesus, desert dweller, help us now at this time of Lent to accompany you and to allow you to lead us. If we have grown soft and cushioning our lives with excuses, expose us to be, expose us to the toughness of your way. If we have grown lazy and cushioning our minds with easy and thin thoughts, expose us to the rigor of your truth. If we have grown comfortable and cushioning our lives with satisfaction and success, expose us to the challenges of your life. As we walk, God, be our way. As we learn, God, be our truth. As we grow, God, be our life. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated, friends. For our prayer of intercession, in response to Lord of all mercy, you are invited to say, hear our prayer. Loving God, the refuge and strength of all, you hold the people of Ukraine in the palm of your hand. The name of each person there and who has fled is written on your heart. In the darkness of invasion and war, and in the mire of political machinations. Spread, we pray, the light of hope, of justice and of peace. Encourage those who are frightened to find strength in you and in those around them near and far. Lord of all mercy, hear our prayer. Help the worldwide family of nations to respond in love and compassion with outstretched hearts, open minds, and with the wisdom needed to effect a peace that will last. Save us, we pray, from not caring enough for your son's sake. Lord of all mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for creation as it cries out to you. We pray for leaders with the power to make changes that would lead us forward in hope for good people that deserve much better. We pray that those with responsibility to hear your call to bravery and courage and step out for change. Lord of all mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are bewildered and suffering because of the reality of climate change now with us. The injustice of climate change that sees the most vulnerable often bear the first burdens. Draw near to our sisters and brothers in Queensland and New South Wales especially, who have lost their homes, their communities, and in some cases, the people they love. Help us to support them in meaningful ways and seek ways to bring justice in our transition to a more balanced world. Lord of all mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church at the commencement of this Lenten season that we might hear the calling of our faith to work for justice and peace. We pray that we might consider how, with our time and resources, gifts and talents, we might use them and they might be used by you to offer your hope and light into the world and bring healing to creation. 
Lord of all mercy, hear our prayer. In silence, we bring to you the people and places who need your guiding presence at this time. We think especially of Heather and her family and friends at this time as they prepare to commit Ellen to God's love and care and eternal life. Might we know that God in love hears our prayers. As we carry them with us, might we know God's closeness and step forward in hope as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. him together follow follow i would follow jesus and we will stand as we are able and sing and dismissal. God, you called to the chaos and it became order and the universe and everything that exists sprang into life. In Christ, you call us through the water in baptism. 
on our journey through Lent from life, from death to life once more. Travel with us, God. Mark us with the ash of the earth. Life become death to nurture life again. As we fast, make us hungry for a world where no one goes without. When we give, may we give for the peace of earth. And may we always and everywhere pray with humble and grateful hearts. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, who goes before us, forever loving as you love. And may God in Christ call us on, the love of God comfort us as we go, and the holy light and the Holy Spirit light the way ahead. Amen.